All right. Uh, welcome to the OFX Podcast. I'm Dave Claxton. And along with me, as always, is the throttler of the 3K, <laughs> Bethany McChesley. You see where we're going? You see the theme here? Um, episode is brought to you by Duonamic. Um, by the way, I got so I haven't done since OCRWC, I haven't done a lot of grip and pull up workouts. I took a, I took a little bit of a break to recover. Mm-hmm. I was actually finally feeling a little bit of tendonitis in the elbow, which is yeah. really for me. I've gotten to the point where that doesn't happen anymore, but I was finally catching up. I'm like, so I took a break, but I did, I got back to it today and I had a really good, good grip and pull workout today. It felt awesome. I have veins going everywhere mm-hmm. and it was like, Hercules and He-Man. You have, to, you have to loosen your watch halfway. Yes, exactly. You know, <laughs> like CrossFit, but with the watch. Hold on, I got to strip the watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it was awesome. It was good. And I did use the dynamic for that. So that was awesome. Uh, again, still a great door frame pull-up system. And by designateddrinks.ca, where we have a code you can use. It's really difficult. Cheers. There you go. So good designateddrinks.ca, provider of non-alcoholic beverages. And today I am having a sober carpenter in the oh, am i reading the french one yes i am irish red <laughs> irish red there's the english version showing and both sober for carpenter official languages. was actually one of the originals um it's been around for 17 years look at you with the knowledge you're well like, i had a great chat with you're them you're like the jack bauer of, of non-alcoholic beer <laughs> <laughs> i know <laughs> they're awesome they're awesome people they're really awesome yeah. um so i am yeah. having one for the road uh proceed with caution so this is their amber and how's that one um i really like it so this brand is becoming one of my favorites one for the road um and they also so this the creator of this one is a big mountain biker so all of them have a different um really cool mountain biking picture on it and i heard that one of the so the creator designated drinks is actually making a collab beer with the owner of one for the road so look for that one coming they're trying to figure out what the cool picture is going to be on front and i suggested an obstacle course racer so he said he would think about it (laughs) i thought maybe you were going to suggest yourself on a bike (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) that would be cool so this one is an Irish red and that's not really my thing. It's not really my jam, but I'm experimenting. I'm experimenting and I will continue to say that this is not really my jam, but it's not bad. It's not bad. Mm-hmm. I will finish it. Whereas I had that pumpkin one and I couldn't finish it. It was no good. <laughs> so, so far, um, the triple bogey is still my favorite, which they have great pictures of golf on the front of theirs. I don't know what that says about me, but whatever. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, but I do. I do like most of the loggers. I haven't really found any of the loggers or anything like that that I haven't liked yet. So I'm still working. And I'll, you know, I'm just going to keep working my way through trying them all. But I do like that brand, that one for the road. It was good. Not bad. Um, before we get to Spartan craziness, and we will have a guest later that actually has nothing to do with Spartan, but that's okay because uh, Battle Bunker talk. Um, well, I say that provided everything works out technically, that can go awry. But let's see. I want to talk about shirt theft. Oh. <laughs> what happened so i it, like i was wearing a long sleeve when i started my run and then i was doing my 500 meter repeats down and back on the street and this is like a quiet quiet neighborhood so i take i just took my outer layer the long sleeve off i put it beside a fence in between a bush like nobody it's such a quiet area i, I do this all the time i usually tie it around a tree or something and then I ran down 500 back and I looked and my shirt was gone. I've literally, I've been running a long time and I drop things and bushes and places, pick it up on the way back. I've never had something stolen before. And so at first I thought maybe the owner of the house got a bit ticked off and like took my shirt and threw it in the garbage. And I knocked on the door. He was super apologetic that I lost my shirt obviously I had nothing to do with it and I yeah and then I was looking around I couldn't see anybody walking down the sidewalk either direction and so my shirt was just gone and it's one of those shirts that I've had it for a long time it's one of my favorites I've probably had it for 15 years and so you can't just go out and replace it is she still going on about that shirt Dave asked. (laughs) I I asked about it. So here's, 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 I've come up with theories. Yeah. So here we go. 
because and then I'm going to put a positive spin on things. All right. So uh -huh. one, this could be an obsessed fan. Oh, oh gosh, just... that's not a positive spin. <laughs> that's creepy. Okay, fair enough. That's a creepy spin, but it's a spin nonetheless. <laughs> it can be an obsessed fan. It could be that just wanted your shirt. Maybe you should have autographed it. That would have been nice. If you are Bethany's obsessed fan, um, next time, you know, just say hi. That's ask better. me. <laughs> and ask, maybe she'll give you the shirt. It might be it might be a thing. Um, and then I got like, I just come up with this one. And I gotta be honest, it's no more positive. It's even worse. Um, maybe like the guy at the house is like a creepy silence with the lambs kind of guy, you know, and he's got that going on and he's taking it. And it's like now he's going to make his his woman suit out of. Oh, this is awful. You no, know, I just come up with that one now. It is, it's um, yeah, I could be okay. honest. All my spins are kind of negative. OK, so what I thought to make myself feel better was that someone was just really cold and they found a shirt and then it helped them stay warm. So it was my good deed for the day. It might have been a homeless person. That those are positive. They're a lot more positive than my spins. I got to admit. Yours are creepy. <laughs> my other one was you should just run faster and then they wouldn't have had time to take the shirt. Uh, this would have happened in uh, four minutes. So this was premeditated. <laughs> See, it's all creepy now. This is like shirt stealing in, <laughs> in the third looking. degree. <laughs> Sorry, six minutes. Six, yeah. Six minutes. Six minutes. Six, six minutes? That's a little slow. You should pick up the pace. I mean, really. Well, my, like two minutes down, two minutes rest, two minutes back. Oh. All right. All right. I, I accept that. That's six minutes. That's six minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't steal shirts, people. That's wrong. It is wrong. It's I like. I think like like stealing a runner's shirt is that's like the equivalent to like sitting on someone's motorcycle you didn't ask to do. It's, <laughs> it? it's against the code. There's a code, it's, right? I know. It's also weird because it's smelly. Like, what are you gonna do with it? Now you're making it creepy now, not me. That was well, you. So is the seat of the <laughs> bike. No, they're not sweaty or smelly. They're good. Have you seen the guy that drives those? Yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Enough of that. Mm -hmm. Um. Tons and tons of Spartan changes. First, we're going to get one out of the way. Um, the Triple Crown. Did you hear about it? Uh, the Triple Crown? No. Nobody fucking cares anyway. It's terrible. It's oh, okay. <laughs> it's like uh, win the 100 meter uh, world obstacle course, win the 3K somebody championship, maybe Spartan, maybe world obstacle, who knows, and win world stuff as mutter. And that's the Triple Crown. Well, you know what? Nobody's going to do that. Nobody cares. No. Let it die in the wind. And we're done with that part. Okay. All right. Moving right along. <laughs> no burpees for... We'll start there. No burpees, because I think this will be a quicker one. No burpees yeah. for age group or elite. So essentially, any competitive wave, no burpees. Bethany, what do you think? Um, I think this is one that doesn't shock anybody. We kind of saw this coming. This season, uh, every race that I've done in Canada... There hasn't been burpee penalties except at the spear throw and the exception of one obstacle at Blue Mountain. So I had a feeling they were moving in this direction anyways, and it really does make sense. It helps standardization. The burpees have been a bit of a crapshoot um, in the elite heats as well, just with like you're, you're looking at form. Um, and the other thing that was ha happening, so they videotaped the burpee pit. So you cross the finish line and sometimes you don't even know if you win. So if you're, you did burpees at a couple obstacles, I know I'd finish sometimes and I'd be like, oh, I hope I didn't have bad form. And you have to wait sometimes a couple hours to find out what the podium actually is because they go back and they count burpees. And then you have 10 seconds for every bad burpee or missed burpee. And so it's sometimes the people that cross the finish line, the order isn't the order. So that's kind of annoying in a racing situation. And then we've seen times too where people miss more than six burpees and they have that 10 minute penalty. So I think it just eliminates all of the judging, the rewatching of videos, the podium is the podium crossing the line um we don't need that volunteer at the burpee pit you just you run the loop i think it's it was definitely a move in the right direction and i think it's it's been uh it's been coming and i don't except for some people um i think people at the competitive level i don't know if anyone's too upset about it as far as a racing perspective to to go with what you said <clears throat> i think back in 20 I think it might have been 2018, 2018 or 2019. I did Bermacombe Spartan 
and ran the sprint and they had a penalty loop for the spear throw there. And I think that yeah. was one of the first ones they did. That was the fire yeah. ant one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I remember this one. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that's how far back they've been playing with this. So anybody surprised, like you said, shouldn't be. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, the other part of it too, where you start talking about the penalties, Blue Mountain last year, so not just the previous one, but 2021, um, when we were waiting for the podiums, the age group was very, very delayed because they were going mm -hmm. through so many burpee penalties for people on the yeah. podium. And that's, you yeah. know, that, you know, they could have, if it was people down below, they can just sort it out after. Right. But the podium has got to be right. And yeah, they were really delayed on that. And it had us, all of us, as soon as we heard that we're all running over to the tent to check and see if our times are still the same. And if we got bumped and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah, that's not cool. And it even played in, and most people don't know this. It played in the women's race this year, almost very, very hard because Ariel Fitzgerald failed her spear throw and had to do burpees. And she still ended up finishing, I want to say like a minute to a minute and a half ahead of Miranda Kaplinski, who came fifth. And I remember because I ran in with Miranda and I could, we could see Ariel finishing her burpees when we were on the bucket carry because it was videoing, coming down, way ahead. And if you look at the standings, she ended up, she was only 23, yeah, 23 seconds ahead of Miranda because she got burpee penalties. So a little bit more and she could have lost her position out of that. And obviously that would have been yeah. really costly. I don't know about money for that race, but I think like this could play into next year's pro contracts because a top five position in a national series race, I think bumps you to level two, or at least it did last year. I'm assuming they're going to do the same thing. And yeah, that could have made a big difference in, in the outcome of your contracts and stuff like that. So having those gone and now being a, somewhat standardized penalty loop i think anybody who's arguing is just not paying attention makes sense, makes sense. they're not paying yeah. attention. i mean isn't it stupid yeah. to have to assess a penalty for someone's penalty <laughs> it's like getting taxed on tax yeah yeah and like it's not all going to be run loop some of it's going to be crawls right. some of it's going to be carries so it's it's not because some people were saying to well now it's just a runner's race but i mean it's not that's not really the case they are going to add some other things especially in those tight spaces they're they're going to make it work so oh. i think it's it's it was the right decision yeah 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 and it, it's spartan Nau has always been a runner race runner's race and it, it still will be or will it <laughs> or will it <laughs> Has the world finally come around to me? And by the way, burpees will still be in the open category. So if you want to get your burpees on, have at it. Do as so many what as are you they, want. What are they doing then in the open? Are they leaving it to the choice of the racer to do burpees or the loop? I, I think the burpees are the, are the prescribed penalty for the open category. However, if you've ran the open, nobody cares. Right. Most most right. people don't do them anyway. Right. That's right. It's 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 run your own race, do what you want to do. So most people don't do them. So it doesn't really matter. But if you want to do your purpose and if you want to do an open race and you want to feel like, and this is, I actually believe this, if you want to feel, say you're someone who's new to doing a Spartan race and this is your challenge, this is your, I want to accomplish a goal. And if that's the way you feel, do the burpees because then you know you've completed the course. You know you've done it right. You know, mm -hmm. if I, if it's like me running an open and I don't do my burpees, well, I don't care. You, you don't even have to give me the medal. I don't really give a crap. Right. But yeah, but technically if you want to have that medal and feel like you earned it, you, you should do your burpees for the open way, but nobody's going to make you, nobody's going to police you. Well, like except that. if burpees aren't really a part of the Spartan racing in elite anymore, it's not really now saying you finished the Spartan race because you did your burpees. No, but it is in the open way because it's part of the race right you're, oh, okay. that's your failure for the obstacle that's your penalty right because that's still the prescribed penalty unless they decide okay. to change that too i think they did that because burpees are such a ingrained thing in spartan yeah, yeah and joe may yeah. have shot himself with a laser pistol if <laughs> if if they took it away <laughs> completely so yeah yeah so that's it so i think everybody's pretty much i don't know i saw comments online like oh no this is not a hard race anymore and a lot of that and i'm like I felt like telling each of these people and not mean just if you're one of the people concerned about burpees, you're probably running open and they're still there. Right. Right. And I mean, you, if you pass all the obstacles, you don't do burpees anyways. Yeah, I know. 
So. Yeah, I know. Come to DECA. We do burpees at DECA. Ram burpees are even harder. With weight. With weight. Yeah. It's fantastic. <laughs> I actually am a big fan. Um, mm -hmm. Moving along from burpees to the big one, the big dog, mm -hmm. the real thing. So everybody's heard, but we're going to mention it anyway. Spartan has decided that next year, the 2023 Elite Series, I'm assuming it's going to be uh, North American Elite Series as opposed to a US, a Canada, Mexico. I think they'll all be together again. All of the races, instead of being super beasts or sprints, will be 3K races. And this has shocked the world. <laughs> okay, but they're still doing supers sprints and beasts correct okay i thought you said instead of no for in, just for the elite series oh for the series correct yeah, yeah. so okay. that, that's likely going to be i mean if history is any lesson that's going to be what, somewhere between four to six races right for those yeah. specific races there will be and and there's still going to be probably a super sprint and beast at those races but the elite series will be the 3k yeah okay and so and the the majority of the prize money. Yes, the majority of the prize money will be will be tated, touted towards that. So let's use Blue Mountain for example. Let's say Blue Mountain, and and my guess is that it will be part of the Elite Series again because it did go over so well. So I'm going to guess they'll go back there. That means that yeah, you're going to probably have your Sprint, your Beast, and your Super, and there will probably be Elite Waves for it. And maybe they'll pay out five hundred bucks or something. Maybe they won't. I can't say for sure. But then on the Friday night before all that, there will be a 3K elite race for the series. Now, the breakdown of it, as we are told, and as has been publicized, there will be 45 spots for men, 45 spots for women. They will then run, and I'll just, we'll just say for each gender, they will run three one kilometer, 10 to 12 obstacle qualifying waves. All right. So if you're in this 45 people, you'll be in a wave of 15 people. You'll do a one kilometer race with 10 to 12 obstacles. And then from that 45 all together, that'll be a time. It'll be time trial format from that 45, 15 people will be knocked out and they will run another two one kilometer races with 15 in each, 15 in each wave. And then 15 more will be knocked out of that. And you'll be down to your 15 for the Elite Series race, which will be a 3K, which will be three loops of the 1K course. Is that also done on Friday night? All done on Friday night. Okay, so you could potentially race 6K? Five. So, okay. Two so ones two, and a three. Two ones and a three, okay. Yeah, so you could potentially race that five. Now, I assume there's going to be a break in between them and so on and so forth. Now... Do you want to run with that, or do you want me to tell you what, I, what I've heard? <laughs> you Keep going, yeah, because there's some stuff I hadn't heard yet, too. I, okay. Yeah. Well, specifically for that, I was going to talk about that particular scenario. You, obviously, the thing that jumps out at everybody right away, and I'm sure it jumps out at you, is why am I running a one-kilometer qualifier for a 3K race? Yeah. So, I mean, I know why they're doing this, but... Okay, why are they doing it? Well, it's just a matter of time, really. Like, you are you know, the 3K could be 30 minutes. The 1K can be 10. Like, so it's just to get through it faster, realistically. Yeah, it, it, it's a different race when we're talking people at the high end. Like, you know, racing a, 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 a what? Well, let's, there's more like a 1500 and then a 5K. They're, they're different runners. So as a track, like a former track athlete, how does that make you feel? Because, I mean, I've heard some... I mean, I can say specifically Bracken has gone publicly saying this doesn't make sense. I'm going to do it anyway, but it doesn't make sense. Uh, Faye Stenning, same thing. Mind you, she didn't say she's going to do it. She really doesn't like the 1K part. She was kind of all on board on the 3K and then didn't like that 3K part. So people like that um, are a little bit thrown off by that. Does that throw you off? Not really, I guess. Like, I understand because, again, when you come from the track world, you do your preliminary races and they do it even up to the 5,000. So you'll, you don't do the heats of a race and then you're 
finals is a different race. Like you're yeah. doing heats of the same race. So coming from a track world that it doesn't really make sense. Um, I think they're just really thinking logistics here. I don't really think that they've, I, I guess because right now we're not necessarily as OCR athletes, super, super specific in the distances that we race like except for this season with the 3k and dj and a couple people actually focusing on a specific distance most of the ocr racers will race a 5 to 21k so we're relatively diverse athletes in that way to begin with so i think the argument of saying like that's a really different athlete i don't know yet in ocr if, if we're really that specific yet um so I don't think it's that big of a deal to have people race thousands um, and then the final of three. So I get it too. I, and, and I'll come at it from two different worlds and then nobody, well, maybe some have come through, but from one is from a ninja world. And quite often we in the ninja competition, will have to do one course to qualify for a course further along. And they're completely different. One could be completely speed orientated, and then the next one could be a pure grip and hang orientate one. One can be full of agility and the next one full of, of like finger holds. It can be completely different. So the people who qualify from the first one might not necessarily be the best people for the second one. But you know what we're told? Screw it. Get better. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of like, I'm of two worlds on this. One, I think what Bracken and Faye and all of those people are saying makes 100% sense. Mm -hmm. It totally does. And in a perfect world, that is absolutely the way it should work. Yeah. Um, and, you know, even in the track world too, a good 5,000 meter runner can jump, can drop down and race a good 1,500. Yeah. And vice versa. I, like, again, like a good, good track runner is, is good at multiple distances too. So yeah. It's it's more just I think the running one distance to qualify for another distance I think. Yeah, and then here's the other aspect which is completely irrelevant, but I think is where the idea comes from because we all know David Watson is a nut for Formula One, and what do you do in Formula One? You get shorter laps around the you know shorter time around the track, to put in your fastest time, hence that's your qualifying. All auto racing is done with like a short qualifying and then a very long race, so that might be kind of his. And you know what? It might not make the most sense from an athletic point of view, but it's damn exciting. Yeah. It really is. And yeah. I I mean, obviously, and they're not they're not hiding it. That's where they're going with this. They want this to be viewable. They yeah. want it to be exciting. They want it to be fun. They want it to be male, female, under an hour, nice TV product, one hour long, good to go good visuals, good everything. It's just, it makes sense. And I think the sports needs it. I've been saying they need this kind of crap for a while. And I'm like, you know, yeah, I, I think, I think it has to be done. And like, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because it's definitely, yeah. From, from a media standpoint, and we've been saying this a long time too, this is one of the roadblocks with getting people into the sport is it's not very visible. And so things where super um, exciting coverage is going to help the sport provided they do that well and yeah. i they've also hinted that they have a plan to make sure that that is done really well and then again when you're looking at the heats and you and this is kind of where you get invested in athletes too um even ones you don't know where and you'll watch them kind of work their self work their way through the heats and then into the finals so you're kind of like you kind of get your favorites and you're kind of invested in the the athletes themselves by kind of watching them go through um, the trials and then the final. The thing about it too is what I like about it. Right now, they're talking 45 men, 45 women. And when's the last time we saw a women's or men's field even with elite field with 45 people in it? Yeah, it's well, on the not... women's side, I there's been very few races except for Spartan North Americans and Spartan worlds where there might've been 45 women. Yeah. Well, like if we go back to, to blue mountain, just cause that's right up on screen 22, so not even half. And that was probably, that was one of the bigger fields that I've run yeah, in this year. We had a lot of Americans come up for that. We had Mexican people from Mexico, Mexicans come up for that. Yeah. Um, the men was, a, the men was 25. Oh, so wow. 
I, I was actually expecting to read more there. I was thinking maybe it would be more. So we haven't had big fields. Mm -hmm. I think this will get 45 people in each one. I agree. Yeah. Because people are going to want to try it. They're going to want to go for it. And they're like, we, they've indicated the prize money would be more. So that's that too. And I'm like, and it's know, something it hasn't been done. So people don't really know if they're good or not at it. No. And here's the thing. I qualified for elite last year because I had the uh, had the podium at Blue Mountain. Really wasn't going to do it unless there was some reason. One, I didn't. I don't. I don't think I raced a competitive Spartan last year, but wasn't planning to go elite just because one, I really wasn't going to have a chance in a in a beast or whatever. I maybe would try a sprint for 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 kicks, even knowing I wouldn't do that well. That's why I still say they need a better medal. By the way, make a cool medal for the three k, just so you know. I'm putting that out there already. Um. 3k comes to town i am all freaking over it mm -hmm. <laughs> and i still will probably be near the back i probably won't make it through q q1 right by the way new phrases q1 q2 i'm excited about that There's big q's and little q's and, and then q's no and q's. lots of q's with no u's <laughs> but here's the thing i'm and, and i i spoke with ariel about this today i'm like i cannot run with the elites over 21k yeah. I can't run with them over 10. I can't run with them over even five. But over 1K, if a high level elite slips on an obstacle, I am fast enough and good enough on obstacles to capitalize. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, people like me who were obstacle orientated and okay runners have become threatening overnight. Mm -hmm. And I think that's exciting. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. It's going to change the face of the the elite podiums, I think. Like, and I I think in some ways too, this sport kind of needs that, especially on the women's side, to just mm -hmm. kind of change things up a little bit in the front end. And this is the thing. I do here's the thing. I see people. Oh no, no more Atkins. No more this. No more Ryland Shadag. No more bullshit. Mm -hmm. I watched those guys. I ran with them in the three k at at Stratton. They're going to do just fine. <laughs> they, yeah they don't have any yeah. worries they're okay they will yeah. transfer their skill set they it's it's not that they can still run they can still obstacle they are still strong they're they're not all of a sudden gonna suck go oh my god i can only run 21k i can't run three right it's yeah. not gonna happen you're still gonna see those guys on top will it be a little bit of a power shift maybe maybe vj well i shouldn't say that vj right now is your front runner right 3k specialist a guy like say leon even though he's probably not gonna be over here for it although i think he'll travel for a few mm -hmm. i like leon big threat now samuel lee bear all of a sudden eh, a little more of a threat right guys with that kind of ninja style background they become relevant um amy Paget. yeah yeah that girl has now become a relevant threat yeah and hannah what's it cortez hannah carter Carter yeah, yeah she's incredible on obstacles too like and their names too that we don't hear all the time but again you have an extremely obstacle dense course mm -hmm. and you do have again outright speed like yourself like a face standing stuff like that that maybe it wasn't as relevant in a beast on the mountains but on a short 1k qualifier course with no not a lot of elevation that's super relevant and it, yeah I find it exciting I think it's great um did you see the complaints online um yes and i'm not surprised um i i think first of all it's a, such a big change that change scares everybody at first anyways so i think a lot of the reactions are just that initial oh my goodness this is super different and i think like we just finished our season well some We've not all finished our season. There's still Spartan Worlds. Yep. So we're all thinking, okay, hey, you're going to put in the big miles this winter, kind of making plans for the long, long training sessions. And then all of a sudden we're like, oh, we're racing 1,000 meters and 3Ks. So now all of a sudden we're thinking, this is totally different than my office. Well, it's not really going to be totally different. But now we're having to focus on a different type of training over the winter too um and coming into the next season so i think it's just that the change was so big 
And I don't know if people really saw this coming as the focus of next season as the Elite Championship Series. Like, I think we had all hoped that they would put in something like Spartan Cross, but to have it all of a sudden, this is the race that the elites are supposed to do for all for the prize money. I think that was the big shocker. Um, so, yeah, I've seen, I saw a lot of people really upset at first, but then I think over the few days when it's kind of set in a little bit, people are shifting a bit more to be a little bit excited about trying something different. I, I think so too. And so I'll focus with the elites first, where as I spoke very briefly, I'd like, I, I want to get some videos and some, some one-on-one -on -one chats with them, but messaging with a lot of the Canadian elites, the high-end Canadian elites. And for the most part, it's been, as you said, shock, pretty shocked, but also a lot of excitement to try really want to give it a go and some of it from strange places i'm not going to go into it but the, some of the places you would not think we're, we're actually very excited to give it a try um and but there was there was a couple that are like i you know this isn't what got me into the sport maybe i'll give it a go but it's really not what what i got into the sport for um seems to be and i think you hit the nail on the head with maybe kind of the throwing it all at once yeah. Is 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 a bit of a mistake, and maybe there should have been a little more. Okay, two races this series this season are going to be three Ks, and then you know a super beast, whatever. Like maybe blended in a little bit. But I understand, I understand why they did it. I get it. It's just was it advisable? I don't know. Now, here's the cold and harsh business truth of it. Most of the complaints I saw, and I'm taking away from the elites. Everybody else who I saw complaining about this, I'm going to say one thing. The only thing that has changed for you is what you're going to view on the live stream. Because if you're not one of those 45 people running elite, it makes no difference in your world. Your race is still the same, except now you don't got to do burpees, which we've decided is better anyway. So your race is still the same. Your age groupers, you're still the same. Your series is going to still be the same. The open waivers, you haven't changed nothing. That's identical. So what you're upset about makes no sense. Mm -hmm. Because it all it does now is instead of watching all the elites run through the mountains, we're going to watch them on a fast course with hopefully better signal. Yeah. And that's the only change. And in reality, we just said there was 22 women elites at Blue Mountain, 25 men. So how many people does this actually affect that could be negatively? Let's say half of them are upset about it. That's 25 people that are upset about this that actually are going to be affected. And from what I'm seeing, most of them are saying, I'm giving it a shot anyway, because quite frankly, you wave enough money, they're going to go. Yeah. Well, and if it, is it always happening on the Friday? Is that what they've said? It seems that's going to be the play for this is, yeah, so that they can still have. And because that's what everybody thought, like, oh, this is taking away all our other races. No, it's not. This is going to be like a Friday night event, Friday night lights. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm assuming late afternoon, night, you know, kind of thing. Go through it. And then Saturday, Sunday, just like always, will be your regular Spartan races. So you don't, you can do that and then still do your beast. Yeah. Okay. So like a Ryland Shade can come down, run his 3K, compete. And then go do his hike, you know, his run his elite race in the beast of the woods and look at the sunset and, and do what Ryland does. and Sunrise. Sunrise, my apologies. It was very beautiful. It that. was darn beautiful. <laughs> it wouldn't have stopped me, but, you know, it, it, you know. <laughs> but the point is, you can still have that run through the mountains, that Spartan historic thing that, that, that people seem to love. You're not losing it. It's still there. Mm -hmm. and you know what i know i'm like normally i'm the guy to slam spartan and i'm kind of coming to the defense right now but that's because this is something that i've wanted for a long time <laughs> so they're finally yeah. coming around mm -hmm. so yeah try not to be too upset give it a try and 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 we'll go from there we'll see how it works i agree i think throwing it all in at once was a bit much mm-hmm and I would like to have seen a smoother, slower transition, but maybe they're just not in a position to do that. Yeah. Yeah, and I do hope their goals with it end up coming to fruition. Like, they talked about getting, when we have more media attention, we can hopefully get more 
money to the elites, more sponsorship opportunities. Um, that's another thing that the sport kind of lacks. Uh, they have a really big focus on getting into the Olympics right now. And they've stated that they think the 3K is the way it could happen. Um, I'm not really sure the obsession with getting into the Olympics necessarily, but um, I guess that's the direction that they want to head. So that's all, again, kind of why they're focusing on this 3K distance. Um, yeah, so I hope all of that happens. I hope they do a really good job with the media and the live streams, and it could make for some extremely exciting racing. And here's the thing. If one level of Spartan makes money, for example, if this makes money, that will filter into the other levels and that will give those levels a chance. So maybe you can go back and you can have your 3K series. We'll call it the Olympic series because they seem to be calling it the Olympic distance. Your Olympic series, your mountain series, maybe your stadium series. Yeah. It needs money. For those of you out there saying this is all just about money. Yes, yes, it is. Good for yeah. you. <laughs> it totally <laughs> is. They're a freaking business. Of course, it's about money. If you right. expect them to be about something else, you're you're kidding yourself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, it's about money. Why do you go to work? For money. Right, right. And these aren't inexpensive events to put on. No, no. Fact, the locations that they're renting are ex probably extremely expensive, so... Well, I think some of them actually, they, some of them, they get a good deal. Some of them, they get paid to go to, which is 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 just good. And that's all great. I, I know people seem to get upset when they make money. I'm quite happy when they make money. I want them to make more money, make lots of money. That's okay. That's a good thing for us. Mm -hmm. um, this does open up different venues, which is kind of exciting. I was actually thinking, and I don't think it'll happen this year. Freaking Red Deer would be a killer venue for this. <laughs> that would be so fast. Yes, it would. Yeah. I mean, even the 5K at Red Deer is lightning speeds. So yeah. that, that would just be amazing. I would love to see that one eventually. But I don't think when it comes to Canada, I don't think that'll be our first one. I mean, odds are money you got to bet on one of the bigger ones, right? That's why I say probably blue. I'm not going on any information. I'm just saying that's the biggest one. It went so well this year. Mm -hmm. I would definitely see it again until they learn that October, at the end of October, you keep yeah. getting good weather. You're just getting lucky. Stop it. Move it to a different mm -hmm. date, please. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, okay, well, here's another thought that I had, though, is when they set up for these events, they're going to have all these obstacles in this 1K loop. So then are they going to move stuff to the longer races or are we going to be doing a trail run with a 3K obstacle course race at the end? I think think what you're going to see so for example let's just say let's lay it out at blue mountain like tribe because they weren't planning to this year but if you did it at blue mountain took away the climbing and just looped from the sections at the bottom you can make a 1k course with about 10 obstacles all right there and on the bottom and so it takes a little bit of extra planning but it's not that bad considering most of those are up to an obstacle down to an obstacle right it just takes a little bit more planning it out but it wouldn't really i don't think it'd be that bad i don't think it'd be that difficult to do so we'll see. That's up yeah. to, uh, that's up to bear. That's his problem. Yeah. I think though, cause you still want to get the exciting obstacles in that one K. So I think our, our, our beasts and our super are really going to be obstacle dense in the finish then. Probably they already kind of are though, but yeah, they probably. are. But I think even more dramatic now, mm -hmm. it kind of has to be, unless you're going to start moving rigs up the mountain after the 3k nope i can't see them doing that. it it's too difficult it's too long it's too hard so it'll be right where it's at so you know maybe the courses will change a little we'll see they did say some stuff too like i mean you're gonna see possibly double sandbag carries um all right it can't be all sunshine and rainbows laser pistol stupid <laughs> <laughs> i don't understand <laughs> what event is that gonna be in? i don't know Wherever it is, is stupid. I know. And again, it's like, okay, so now what? This is, we're talking about a speed event. You have to be really good at it. So now does everybody have to buy a laser pistol? Yes. Practice? And I'm going to start selling them. Dave, let's get on this. <laughs> laser pistol sales. What we need to do is break out Nintendo and I'll play Duck Hunt. <laughs> Duck Hunt was a great game and it needs to make a comeback. So is the laser pistol replacing spear throw? No, I don't believe so. 
okay. don't believe so. And um, if you look online on Instagram right now, Matt uh, with Obscure Media actually has a little, I'm sure it'll be online soon, the full interview. It has a interview with Garfield Griffiths. Uh, I used to think he was race director. Now he's maybe Spartan special events coordinator. Some he's got a different title. Maybe anyway, Garfield, we all know we love, he's a great, great race director. Uh, and they're talking about the pistol and he's showing essentially how it works. And essentially the pistol thing. And here's the thing. I kind of wish the spear throw was this concept, but essentially you got like 50 seconds or whatever it is. You pick up your pistol. You got, it's got 50 seconds. It's got a countdown. You got to get however many shots in the middle and you get green light. Boom. You get a green light. As soon as you're done, you can go if you don't hit them all while well, you're there the whole 50 seconds. So the penalty is actually within the obstacle itself. Okay. So then how is your score recorded for when you finish? So you get the score right then. So let's just say you have to hit it five times, right? And you and I run up to the thing, to the spear, no, the spear, sorry, to the pistol range, <laughs> firing range. We both go bam, bam, bam. I take five shots. I'm done, right? I run off you keep missing you're there for 50 seconds that's your penalty okay i got gotcha. you okay you know? so it's just like as if it was it's almost mandatory completion with a time limit right okay okay so, yeah you got it so that's how uh that's how that goes and as much as i've described it and it kind of makes sense it, it it's still stupid i agree i don't like it I also, I don't want to have to go practice well. shooting. <laughs> like, Yeah, yeah. And I think a laser pistol shoots differently than a regular gun and stuff. It would definitely feel different anyway. Like, I have a little um, airsoft pistol, and, and, and I mean, I can practice with that. I don't know that it'll feel the same. That'll be the same. And someone online, I wish I remembered who, because the first person I saw say, say it, what happens when the pistol gets muddy? Right, or it's raining. Right? You know? Yeah. Stadium races. Yeah. What's wrong with that? Will there be mud at stadiums? No. Then you don't have to worry about it. So we leave the pistols there? Okay, leave the pistols at stadium races. I like stadium races. Or let's just forget about the pistols and pretend nobody ever talked to it and maybe they'll just let it go. What if Isaiah Vidal comes back and pistol whips somebody? <laughs> then we have a problem. Aaron may throw <laughs> pistols at people. There's a lot of things that can go wrong here. They should just eliminate it now. <laughs> Here's the thing. I mean, all joking aside, this was brought up to me. Um, in age, in the time we live in, is pistols really the right thing to be using, say, from a politically correct standpoint in a race? America. I... Yeah, I I was thinking about this too. Like, why are we adding this into a race? Like, I don't really like it. Like, so I agree. And I hadn't thought about that, but it was brought to my attention today. I'm like, that's not a bad point. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's, I don't I don't want to draw a correlation to it. someone's going to run a Spartan race and shoot a pistol and then do a school shooting. I don't want to do that. Right? That's that's not a likely scenario or a straight line to be drawn. But it is also the glamorization, so to speak, of, of guns. And that's not something that I'm big on. Um, so, yeah, like from a, that perspective, is that something that we should be throwing out there? I don't know. Something mm -hmm. to think about. I know what Mike Stefano would say. <laughs> he would what? be a no. He would be a no. Yeah. He would definitely be a no on that. Yeah. Um, so maybe, may, you know what, here's the thing. Maybe the pistols will be a colossal failure. Yeah. And it won't work. So. I'm it, hoping if now they've opened this up to people's opinions, if they hear enough negative feedback from it, maybe they will let it go. Maybe, maybe that's true. And it could possibly happen. I mean, we all know that truly the feedback that matters is dollars and cents though so as long as people are still going they figure they're doing the right thing but i have a better plan all we need to do is keep making sure the pistols don't work properly when we get there <laughs> it's not functioning it's broken it's broken because this is an electronic thing so they're bound to break oh it's yeah constantly not functioning the battery's dead whatever the case may be if we keep going on that 
And then they'll get sick of trying to fix them. Right. And then they'll get rid of them for costly repairs and stuff. Or or how often till you know it happens, let's say we got, you know, we've got Atkins and, and Rylan running for the finish of the 3K and someone's pistol malfunctions. Right. You know? A little bit different than biathlon, because biathlon, I believe they bring their own guns. And yeah, stuff like and it's that. on them. And it's on them. So I think that's our only way. We got to make sure the pistols don't work. I mean, I could go back to a story in trade school, what I did, which was in trade school, we had files. They gave us really crappy files for working. And the teacher told me that, you know what? They're not going to buy us new ones because these ones are still good. They might not work well, but they're still good. So I broke them all. <laughs> we got new files. <laughs> don't break your Spartan guns. Just tell them they don't work right. <laughs> Ah, yeah. Pistols suck. That's one solution. <laughs> Pistols suck. 3Ks are awesome. Um, you're not losing anything. We won't have to yell at people. We won't have to yell at people. Stop walking behind them. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody's going to get impaled by uh, a laser pistol. We could have serious, ret serious retina damage. What if we do that, right? What if I'm shooting beside you, and in order to make you miss, I turn sideways and I blind you with the laser. <laughs> and oh, then I man. turn the other way and just start shooting. And then that's... That's something I might do. That's actually a good strategy. I'm going to edit that out so nobody else knows to do that. Yeah, that's a win. <laughs> ugly. So. Then you have a penalty for athlete obstruction. Oh, yeah. That, that is a rule, isn't it? Yeah. Oops. Oh. It's a, probably a good one. Like, that's probably a good 10 minutes. That's your whole 1K. They won't see it. Blind them all. No, it's all going to be videotaped. That's the whole point of it. Yeah. Uh. But now, actually, they get rid of the cameras at the burpee pit, which is really good. Our guest is trying to get in. He seems to be struggling mightily. Um, yeah, we uh, they get rid of the, um, the burpee pit, which will help a lot with volunteers, too, because now your volunteers aren't going to spend all their time counting burpees. And I know this is going back, but it's just another point. They're going to be able to be at the obstacles, to be at water stations, to do more productive things than sit there going, that's a no rep. Yeah, it's a no rep. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, that one was okay. Yeah. So <laughs> more productive time for volunteers and judges yeah. and referees and whoever else spends their time counting burpees. And we can sell those cameras on eBay and you can make money from that to buy laser pistols. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> All right. Enough of that. Uh, unless we talk a bit with Johnny when he gets on, when he's having technical difficulties. Oh, by the way, Johnny Mayer's Battle Bunker, that's who we're talking to. So this is the part where you expect Johnny. But no, no, no Johnny. No Beth even right here. Um, if you listened earlier on in the episode, I said we would have somebody if technical issues didn't happen. And man, that was like a complete precursor because technical issues happened. Sadly, we had a good interview with Johnny, but... The sound quality just wasn't up to snuff and I can't bring that to you and we're going to redo it because he's a great guy and I can't wait to talk to him again. Luckily, however, we do have another interview set with uh, the two founders of Healy Medical. It's a pro kinesiology tape, which actually heals. Well, you know what? Listen to the interview. You'll hear what it is. You'll understand. You'll learn. But they are a couple of very smart ladies with an incredible product that is really relevant to us as athletes. So Definitely check it out. And we have a code for you as well. That will be in the show notes. So here they are, Healy Medical. And I often have to be reminded to hit record because one time, just one time, we had <laughs> a, an amazing interview. I don't know if you've ever heard of Carolyn Prevo, but she's a high-level Canadian CrossFitter. And we had a great interview with her for what, like an hour, hour and a bit. Yeah. <laughs> and then just as I was ready to hit stop record but realized i had not hit to record so it used to say on my little board here remind dave to hit record but it doesn't anymore i finally finally got out from the shadow of it but every now and again i gotta remind myself but um <laughs> yeah so beth why don't you 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 start us off 
Okay, so um, today we have on two ladies who are the co-founders of a company called Healy Tape. And they first came on my radar because we had on uh, a guest, a Canadian Olympian, Julianne Stolle, and she was promoting this company. And then I noticed that this company, your tape company, was on Dragon's Den um, not that long ago. And there was another uh, Canadian pole vaulter who you were using in the demonstration. So I, that's when I decided to kind of look into your company. And um, some of the things that I found unique about this company, which I'm going to ask you more about, but was something that is always the problem that I have because I use KT tape quite regularly. I'm, I have a chronic issue with Achilles tendonitis. And the big problem is, do I put on anti-inflammatory gel or do I put on tape? And tape usually wins out, but you have developed something where you get to kind of have the benefits of both. So explain to us then how your product works that way. Yeah, well, you kind of nailed it. Uh, that is exactly what Healy Tape is. We uh, are healthcare practitioners, both Lee and myself. So we have had our own personal experiences and battles with either on ourselves or on patients or friends or family needing a solution, whether it be pain relief, recovery, support, um, but also, you know, kind of having it all in one. Before the invention of Healy Tape, basically we would struggle with either using, let's say, a pain cream like a A535 or a BioFreeze or having stability and support, but you couldn't use both together because the wet nature of the pain cream actually precludes the adhesiveness of the tape itself. So Healy Tape solves that issue. Um, and we kind of consider ourselves a hybrid, I'd say, between a pain patch and a kin tape. And tape, yeah. But, um, you know, for Lee and I, the, the main strengths of the product are that we're natural. So, you know, there's no drugs in it. It's natural. The magnesium and menthol are, are naturally occurring, natural ingredients and elements. And um, you get that pain relief and the recovery and that support and a little bit of style all in one. So you're, you're dealing with two major things there, right? You're dealing with uh, obviously a completely different adhesive that probably no one else is using. And then are you dealing as well with a completely original formula for the I, I guess for lack of term for, for the cream or for the, the healing product, is that stuff both of like your design or was that brought in and then melded together? Well, definitely the, uh, the I guess the ratio between magnesium and menthol is our unique formula. So and Heather and uh, myself, we tried over the course of product development. And also um, it's a specific way we used to um, infuse that ingredient, natural ingredients into the tape. So normal so tape, as you guys know, has just the glue on it, right? To stick yeah. to the skin. And some of the, I guess, best brands have that really cool wave at the back that helps with the fascial lift. And all kin tapes help support a joint. So all kin tapes, kind of including ours, has the support, has a nice glue, has a nice fascial lift to improve some circulation. And that was kind of, I guess, the baseline for where we started. And then Lee and I tested over the course of our development, which actually took us a year, all sorts of stuff for infusing. I mean, we tried everything uh, to see kind of what would work the best. And we landed on the menthol and magnesium, which as you mentioned, is very unique to us. It does not exist anywhere else. We are patented and we are unique with that combination and, and that infusion blend. Um, and, and the reasons we landed on that is because for, I don't know for how many of you guys know about what menthol and magnesium do, and we can get more into that later, but menthol acts as a temporary pain block. Magnesium is kind of like a wonder element that does everything. Uh, you know, it's so good for your body. It's good for cramps. It's good for spasms. It's good for twitches. It's good for mood. It's good for sleep. It's good for everything. Um, but we love it because it flushes lactic acid. So flushes lactic acid, which allows your body to recover and, you know, start bringing in its new blood with all the things that can repair an area, repair an injury, repair, you know, inflammation, whatever it is. And it also helps promote flexibility. 
So if you can have the muscle go through its normal range of motion, you can actually prevent injuries from occurring rather than just dealing with them okay. after the injury. So, Definitely. so not only are we kind of support during the activity or recovery post activity or post injury, but you can actually use this as a preventative. And so if you have a weak area, let's say you have a repetitive strain injury or something you've previously injured, you can apply it to that area knowing that that's kind of, you know, your Achilles heel for lack of a better word. And, uh, you know, use that to prevent the injury from getting worse or from coming on again. Well, I guess add on what Heather mentioned is also we focus on also the smell as well for our products. It's really um, you can have that cooling sensation, but it's not a, offensive because sometimes the menthol can be um, too much when you wear to your practice or wear under your uh, like go to work. Right. So our um, plat, uh, product has a very pleasant um, menthol smell, which is I think is another added benefit as well. It's very mild, um, so you can show it off if you want with the cool designs, or you can hide it underneath your work clothes if you don't want other people to know you're wearing it. <laughs> well, that's good because I work with a lot of old guys, and just the smells are completely out of line with you know Ben Gay and whatever else. I mean, somebody's got rubbed on them somewhere; it's terrible. <laughs> so it's really good to have something a little more control, and, and especially <laughs> if something like this does work really well. Like we're held together with like bits and pieces as we are as I'm getting older, so you know, be nice to keep it calm and controlled. Um, do you guys have, and I've seen this with some, some cake tapes and stuff, almost, uh, instructions for different areas, uh, say for example, for shoulder pain, a way, uh, to instruct for application to, um, to help in certain situations. Do you guys have like videos for that or instructions to along that lines? Yeah. So on our website, um, we do have some like downloadable PDFs that go step by step. And then we also kind of have some more, I'd say, fun application videos of how, you know, you can do it with a friend or a practitioner or how you can do it on your own. Um, I'd say these are still a work in progress. We are continually uh, elevating our application game and application videos. So you might see some different ones and some uh, improved ones coming out soon. But one um, of the best parts about, I'd say, where um, Healy tape differs is if you're using traditional kinesiology tape, you have to get it perfect because the goal of it is to support the joint. With ours, support is actually the secondary function and pain relief and recovery are the primary functions. So if you can get it perfect, if you have a chiro or physio apply it, if you have a friend who knows the anatomy, fantastic. If you don't, just Cover the area that's sore. Let the infusion do the yeah. rest. Yeah, we're trying to change because we found through the patient or family's friends, they sometimes found the king tape so complicated, so they don't have the confidence to use it. That's why it's not very wide used product. So for us, we're infused. We're trying to change concept. You know, you can apply to the areas or just uh, follow the muscle or fascial lines. And again, the magnesium menthol as well as the support from the tape can help you relieve the symptoms. So you mentioned some stuff like cool designs, like, you know, I mean, we gotta be fashionable, right? You gotta match the gear. What do you got? You gotta match your outfit. So we have yeah. 11 designs right now. Um, I mean, I don't think your listeners can actually see see our designs. So we, do, but... we do go on YouTube sometimes, on YouTube as oh, well. Okay, so we can show some. So uh, we have some, uh, this is our number one seller. It's our blue splatter. And uh, our, one of our other really top, top sellers is our Words of Inspiration. This comes both in black and beige. So it's kind of got a lot of motivational words. Um, I'll be honest, the athletes love this one because I feel like it probably inspires everyone to, to push through a little bit, a little bit more than where they were already going, like strong, persevere. Um, we have, so we have that in two colors. So this is the, um, the beige and the black. Um, we have camo, we have pink splatter, um, and we have a whole bunch more, which, uh, we have a beige crackle, a beige crackle. We have a really fun one for people who want to really shake it up. This is our black and white zebra. We do have a traditional, just like a black Healy. So it's just like a plane for people who want to just blend in. This is just like our plain black Healy one. 
And then um, we do have a bunch more. So we have a zebra in both beige and in black. So just like a, kind of like with subtle lines. Um, let's see, this is one of our newest designs coming out. This is our blue inspiration. So this is kind of like a the same as the black, but with the blue. Um, see what else we can find. On top of those strips, so we do have like a few other ones that I can show you, like the zebras. So this one is the black zebra and it comes both in black and beige. Um, so there's a whole there's a whole array. You can find anything for any personality, any age group, any outfit match. Um, and then the next iteration that we've come up with again, which is both kind of function and fashion, is our pre-cut shapes. So for example, this is an Achilles pre-cut shape. Oh no, that's so, cool. someone, thank you. So again, we've got like a bunch of new designs that are super cool and trendy. And for people who don't want the hassle of applying your Achilles in like multiple strips. You could just, you know, wrap this around your heel, throw this up your leg. You can choose, you know, where on your leg you want to apply it or how far apart you want, depending on your injury. And these are all again, infused with the magnesium and menthol inside. So when you, you know, when you tear it, you'll still see those waves in the glue pattern and it will still have that unique benefits of the infusion with the cool patterns. So you would buy just a pack of the Achilles pre-cut tape. Yeah. Yes. So it comes, comes in three pieces. <laughs> yeah. Three pieces in a pack. They'll kind of come like in a bag like this. These will be the pre-cuts and they'll come three specific for that area. Whereas the Healy tape rolls come in a nice box like this with a little with window. The travel case. Yeah. Yeah. And then it'll come with a travel case. You can throw it, you know, in your gym bag, in your purse, um, you know, in your bicycle pouch, whatever you want to do. And it comes convenient like that. And it comes with the pre-cut strips that you just tear off. So it's convenient for you. It's custom made, Beth. I know. That would save me like 20 minutes before my races. <laughs> <laughs> We do also have the uncut versions, let's say for practitioners or, you know, people who, you know, can use, and we're going to come out with jumbo rolls as well. We will go through a lot of tape, you know, or, or let's say uh, athletic trainers or stuff like that. So those will be like the uncut. So you can, you know, for people who are a lot taller or who go through a lot, a lot more tape, those will be more um, practical. But I think for the day-to-day -day person, for the athlete uh, on the go in a rush, uh, either the pre-cuts or the pre-cut shapes or the pre-cut strips make the most sense. Yeah. So one of the things too that um, you had to kind of mention talking about also, and I wanted to ask your experience with it, but being two female founders of a company, have you had any roadblocks in that way or maybe opportunities that have come because of that? I would say opportunities. Um, I think that in, uh, you know, in, today's climate, being multi-ethnic, being women, uh, technically still being considered a minority. Um, I feel like the opportunities that we've encountered have been, for one, a ton of women mentors have come forward, people who are further ahead in their business career, who have able to, um, you know, shed light on, you know, different expertise or um, ideas for us to help us kind of move us quick, quicker along. And the other thing that's been really great is uh, both Lee and I were able to join with Healy, the WBE certification program, which is for women's business. And uh, that's been fantastic as well. It's really uh, opened up some opportunities for us uh, to meet other women and to leverage, um, I guess, a collected women business group, especially in Canada. Also, I think a lot of retailers now, they're trying to promote the di diversities and also women-owned business vendors. So as both female co-founders, we really can benefit the opportunities like that to present to different retailers. Kind of get you in the door, I guess. More so, you know, it doesn't guarantee you anything, but at least it'll help you give you an opportunity to, to talk to them it's really good to hear like times like are changing and things are different. I mean, like, yeah, it used to be something that would have been an issue for you and now it's become a strength and it's, it's just nice that, um, Oh, I hate using this term, but we like, we've woke up a bit and, and, you know, and start to start to realize really that it doesn't matter. So, and we're, we've always been a big 
we kind of started out with that almost like the whole bringing strong women forward. So it's nice to, to continue on that pattern. Um, just a quick note, Buffalo plaid always looks good for tape. I'm just saying would match my shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Like if you're going to model it, we'll consider yeah, it. We'll need some buffalo play. Um, <laughs> what, where do you see this? Like, is there more for you guys to grow from this? Like, where do you see your next, your next developments heading? What direction do you think you're going? Yeah. So Healy tape is really actually the first uh, product for Healy. Our company's name is actually Healy medical. So we have a whole bunch of uh, ideas and products kind of in development and pipeline. Um, I guess like the the goal and mission of our products and of our company is, you know, to help provide natural products for people so that they can take wellness into their own hands and and fashionable. So kind of like be well, be fashionable and uh, and allow our products to be easy and accessible for anyone. So, um, you know, the Healy tape, started with the pre-cuts and the uncut versions and went into the pre-cut shapes, which actually are not launched yet. So they're coming soon. And, uh, and then we're going to move kind of along that path into support and a little like along the same support, but still with infused um, components. So like braces, sleeves, that will, um, those, those are the next products that are, are currently in development right now. And um you know, just a slightly little uh, like pivot from the tape section, but still very useful for people who want to reuse a product um, that can help with, you know, pain relief, recovery, promote blood flow, circulation, and just kind of have a slightly different function. I'm yeah, that. I guess the, our focus for the product definitely is where um, function meets fashion. So we, we we're looking for the space where we can improve the natural products on the market and, and enhance the functionality of it and add our spin of fashion in as well. We we have kind of like our like coin phrase is reinventing pain relief naturally. There you go. Well, I, I like the idea of the, um, let's just say stuff that might be a little more substantial, just uh Due to like, I know my, myself, depending on what I'm doing, sometimes I have to wear a couple of knee braces for like uh, harder Metcons or things that are a little more aggressive. So moving into that realm for something like me is actually a nice, nice way to go because it is hard to find something that works really well and uh, fits you just right and does the right way. So that would be, that would be great. And again, the Buffalo plaid will work for that too. So, <laughs> the ongoing theme, okay? Just what and I it's do. good to to have your mix of your consumable products, so the tape, which is reused and people have to rebuy, and then the products like the knee braces, where you buy one, you love it, and you have it for years. So you kind of have a little bit of both in there too. I think they kind of have a little bit different function as well. I mean, uh, some people, and it's a it allows everyone to kind of get that mix of the pain relief and the recovery and style with whatever product works best for them you know, for athletes, for injuries, for, you know, I mean, depending on where you are throughout the course of your athletic career or through your injury or recovery, it kind of depends on what you might choose to use as well. Mm -hmm. 100%. And also depends on injury the, on the parts of the body as well. I, I got a quick question. This is slightly askew, but still on topic. And, and everybody expects me to say something stupid now, but it's not. It's a promise. <laughs> <laughs> Something we deal with a lot, and and I'm thinking back to your to the menthol infusement is uh, we deal with a lot of torn calluses, ripped off skin from obstacles we deal with and stuff like that. Well, how do you think um, that like uh, your your you whatever I'm sorry how to say the uh, the healing product? How do you think they would work on something like that? Do you think that it would there could there be something along the lines of like a cream or something you could put under a bandage to help kind of the skin yeah. regrow that kind of thing? I don't think that that's our particular niche. I mean, the, you're technically not supposed to put uh, Healy on tape open. on open wounds. Oh, no, no, no. I was saying about Healy yeah. tape. This is what I'm saying about it in, in a different direction, but where you oh. say you have, you have that menthol, that menthol uh, mixture together. Well, well, and I, I don't, it's just from my understanding from the healing properties of those two, like I don't think the promotes the skin like tissue growth and stuff like that 
um, maybe we can look for other other ingredients that would definitely benefit, like vitamin E and all this would definitely benefit, but not particularly exactly. with the menthol. Yeah, I was, I was yes. reaching for the yes. stars here for a little bit, right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll put it in like the distant pipeline. Put it in the think tank. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. We, we did have, um, I did have some at the very beginning I wanted to see, um, because I had heard that you know, menthol and magnesium can help with people who have psoriasis. Mm -hmm. And so I actually gave um, some tape to test it out because it can be calming menthol specifically for like skin irritation. It's got some uh, like anti-itch properties and some antibacterial properties to it. And uh, so far the feedback has been incredible. Hmm. Actually, like we um, wouldn't necessarily promote it for that purpose, but it's nice to know that people who have tested it out so far have loved it. What about it? It's uh, sorry, Beth. Go ahead. Um, no, go ahead. What about uh, resistance to water peeling off? Uh, we do a lot of stuff we do as well. Like one, we get very sweaty, and two, a lot of our races go through water. How is it for resistance to peeling off from water? So, if you're gonna submerge it, we are not waterproof. Mm -hmm. Um, so but one of the benefits of Healy Tape is that the infused ingredients get re released when it's wet. So um, what we would suggest is depending on what activity you're doing. So if you were going to do, let's say, a triathlon or something like that, and you were wearing a wetsuit, it would be a no brainer. You could put it on underneath the wetsuit. It would hold for sure. Um, we've had Ironman, like, you know, Ironman competitors. We've had triathlon competitors all, you know, wear it with no issues, but a lot of them apply it the night before. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. And they'll let it adhese first before they really put it under duress. And that seems to, we have, we have competitive swimmers using it as well. And um, that seems to be one of the better tricks. The minimum application time we would say is like one to two hours beforehand, because you really want to rub it in and get the adhesion to work and to stick. And, and the more you rub it in right at the beginning of the application, especially the corners, the less chance you have of the peeling. Of course, you know, we've tried it in all conditions. It really makes a difference um, what you've done again beforehand. If you have a spray tan, if you have cream yeah. on, if you have, you know, not, you have a lot, a ton of dry skin, all that will affect the adhesion properties. So we'd say best is like clean out of the shower. If you have an alcohol wipe, even better. Or if you've yeah. been able to loofah or get rid of like excess dry skin beforehand, those will all improve your like stick chances. And then, you know, you rub it in, it, it can last. We have people wearing it up to seven days, but our suggested but usage suggest is three days. Three Cause days. that's yeah. really where you get the best benefit of your um, infusion. Your magnesium menthol really will start to, as it gets re-released, you'll start to deplete the amount of menthol magnesium that's in that specific, specific strip. So um, showering, no problems. You're just going to want to like blot it dry and uh, sweating, of course, no problems. Both showering and sweat will have those ingredients re-release. Release, yeah. yeah. But swimming absolutely can be done. Just our recommendation would be to apply it, you know, ahead of time and let it really like stick first. I can guarantee I've screwed that up before. <laughs> well, before. The, other, the other thing also is to not apply it in really humid conditions any tape. So any tape that is applied in humidity will most likely peel off. Well, yeah. I've, I've seen it and done it myself so many times pre-race. You see people like 10 minutes before the race, throwing tape on right away, boom, right there. And I'm never even occurred to me, you know, put it on the night before, get ready ahead of time. Or even like before, you know, like as you're getting dressed, you know, throw it on as you get dressed and then it's, you know, rub it in, then it, you're set for an hour or two hour till, till your race time. If I take anything, that's enough. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I that up. Well, I'm excited to try it. I, I've used tape a fair bit. Um, and we have a promo code for our listeners, correct? Yes, indeed. So is it the OFX tape? Yes. Yes. So if you want to check out Healy Tape um, and you can use our promo code OFX tape. And has the episode been released yet? Have you on Dragon's Den? Yes, it got yes. Us. we won't ruin it two, for you guys unless two, you want. Two, two weeks? Two weeks? Two yeah, weeks so ago. October 6th was our release date. Um, it is on CBC Gem. 
uh, for anyone who wants to see it. And uh, we probably will have a link on our website soon uh, for our portion of that episode. Nice. Well, we'll repost it then. Um, yeah, don't oh, spoil it you. for our listeners. We'll make them watch it. So yeah. <laughs> and one more quick question. Where can we get the tape? Where do we pick it up? Yeah. Um, so we are currently in store at Sport Check uh, across Canada. Um, and do you guys have listeners outside of Canada? Or is this oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we are in the U.S. at uh, CBS Health Hub, Wegmans, Vitamin Shop. And then online, we're, with, we're in a bunch of retailers as well as our own online store. Awesome. And that's HealyMedical.com, right? Yeah, you can get it from our website, HealyMedical.com. And right now we have, uh, like, again, like you, your listeners can get, uh, uh, like, promotions and stuff like that. Awesome. awesome. All right. Well, thank well, you both. We'd love to hear, hear your feedback once you try it. Yes, I will let you know. Awesome. Thank you both very much. Honestly, you're very inspirational and I'm I'm, I'm looking forward to try to and I know a lot of other people will. So, thank you both very much and Thank you for having us. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Here.